What's up guys? So uh, Bromley recently made a video about not dying while lifting weights um, and you know how to fail on lifts and just so happens I recently failed on a lift which is very rare for me. We'll get into that. Um, and when I make a video response to Bromley I get a lot more views. So here we are. Um, first of all let's just look at the video where I failed. Okay, so there, there it is. Uh, I failed 465, and just for my own ego, like over here somewhere, I'm gonna put like my redemption <laughs> and going back and getting it. But um, you know, safeties, safety arms, space savers, whatever you want to call them, um, they are absolutely great. Uh, the ones like on this bench, this is a, a big competition spec bench. Uh, they're very, very sturdy, obviously. Um, and there's, there's no gap like between the upright and the, where it's, so long as you set those correctly, um, it doesn't matter if you've got the bar coming back up over your head and you bail, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, there's no gaps for it to get in between. Um, I know we've all seen that one video where the dude does have safeties, but it comes back over him and there's the small gap, uh, between his safeties and the upright and the bar gets stuck in there and he almost dies. Um, but uh, if you've got like a cage, um, you know, a, a rack with spotter arms, face savers, any of these, always set them with or without a spotter. Uh, I prefer these over a spotter. Like if, if it's either have a spotter and not these or have these and no spotter, I'm going to take these and no spotter every time. Because uh, I, I generally don't trust <laughs> people's spotters, especially randoms. If you've got a solid training crew, uh, that knows you and, you know, they're, they're strong and capable. Um, you know, that, that might change perceptions a little bit, but otherwise I'd rather have these, uh, safety features. Um, smart programming is going to be first and foremost, like you should not be failing reps. Generally speaking, uh, this goes for my people pursuing strength. I know with bodybuilding, you know, the proximity to failure, and I'm not going to get into arguing like to failure beyond failure, uh, just getting close to failure, you know, what's optimal for growing muscle. Um, so, you know, those guys might want to train at or beyond failure. Um, have spotters and shit in place if you're going to do that. And I would honestly say, you know, you guys can opt for dumbbells or cable machines or things like that. Um, where, you know, the, the risk is, you know, of life or death isn't there anymore. Um, and push those to whatever failure you need to go to. Uh, you don't have to do that with the bench press, squats or deadlifts or whatever. Um, for, you know, people competing in powerlifting, obviously, uh, there's uh, lifts that are required. And bench press being one of them. But your, your programming should be intelligent enough that you're not failing reps. Um, if, if we're being really optimal about it, the only time you should ever be in jeopardy of failing a rep is... On the platform at a competition uh if you're not competing you know we do have egos and we want to test one rep maxes sometimes and that's part of it and i'm not going to tell anybody not to um that should be few and far between and hopefully you're in a scenario where it's it's far few and far between enough that you can plan days and do it with your friends or whatever and have them there uh to to spot and two side spotters is always going to be so much better than just one spotter. Um, even on bench press, two side spotters is going to be better than, you know, just having the one person spotting you. Uh, the, the one spot on bench press is viable, however. Um, unlike with squats, it's it's really a back spotter. is not that great of an idea. Uh, you're better off just bailing. But we're, we're focusing on bench press here. Um, you know, side spotters that that takes care of it like you're you're not going to be benching more weight than you pushing and them also on the sides cannot you know get up back up to the bar so uh you know that that's always going to be there um if you are by yourself i train by myself um i'm at my gym at saturdays doing my heavy benches at 4 4 30 in the morning there's nobody there with me uh 
please use safety uh, features, uh, face savers, set them. Uh, it, it is easy to grab a bar and, you know, bring the bar down and see where they're set and reset them and adjust them. And I even, you know, don't set them like this close to where the bar sits with an empty bar. Cause when you do get up to heavier weights, uh, you're going to compress and then your bar is going to start hitting the safeties, you know, take them one hole lower than that. Uh, and, and you're going to be perfectly safe. Um, be intelligent with, you know, your, your training and your, your attempt selection. Um, I, I missed very high. <laughs> I missed really high on that. Um, and most people, most raw bench pressers, you're going to miss, you know, this far off your chest or higher. If you're missing down here, it's too heavy. You, you your attempt selection was bad. Uh, that's that's what that is. And I know you, people are always going to say, oh, you got weak triceps, you miss high, and you know your triceps may be the determining factor of why you're failing the rep. That doesn't necessarily mean they're weak triceps. Nobody with weak triceps is benching, you know, mid 400s plus. Um, if again, that may be where the failure is coming from. And when you're approaching your limits, something is going to be the limiting factor. It doesn't mean that that part of you is necessarily weak. Uh, it could mean that part of you definitely needs more work. Um, but again, you know, I missed high. Uh, but the attempt selection was not egregious and I could control the eccentric, uh, even after failure, uh, if you'll notice, and I'll probably play it again on here. Uh, that's real time. It's not slow motion or anything. Um, and you know, you don't even hardly hear it, you know, come back down. Uh, whereas if I would just fucking free fall and it crashed, you know, you would have seen the bar bend a little bit and the weight shaking and you would have heard them clanging. So I think, uh, you know, being reasonable with your attempts, it's okay. Obviously, you're testing. You may not necessarily know if it's going to be there or not. Um, but you, you should know, like, I'm capable. If, if, if everything were to go right, I should be able to hit this attempt. Uh, you shouldn't be having some pie in the sky fucking attempt. That would be like, you know, I, I, I went back and I got that 465 that same session. Um, but... If I would have went and said, oh, well, I, I ended up getting a 465. Let me try 485. That would have been egregious. That would have been stupid. Uh, and, you know, don't don't be a complete moron with your attempt selection. And I think that's probably the biggest key is not over overdoing it in that capacity. Um, but, again, if you have your safety measures in place, because even, like, if, if you were to pop a peck or something like that, uh, it can happen to anybody. Generally, it's not something naturals are going to, you know, you shouldn't really be worried about. Uh, you would have to do a lot of dumb things, in my opinion, uh, for that to happen. A lot of things to be accumulating. And may maybe you are. Maybe you're that guy. Uh, but have, have those safety measures. Because a spotter, if you pop a peck and just, they're not going to be able to catch it. Uh, they're not going to react in time. Uh, and having one spotter only, uh, you know, if you're benching, 350, 400, 450, 500 pounds, and that happens, uh, they're not going to be able to efficiently and effectively get that off of you. Uh, side spotters are going to be much better there. They're, they're not going to catch it when it happens. It's still going to fall on you. Um, they'll be able to get it off a lot more effectively than one person will. But that's, you know, the face savers and squatting or benching in a cage is always going to be like the, the best thing. Um, like I said, I would choose that over just spotters if having one or the other, um, uh, optimally you're going to have three spotters, you know, one behind you, two on the sides, and you're going to have the face savers or be in a cage or whatever the case may be. Um, but it, it's not something that you should be fearing, um, because, you know, like he said, deaths are very, very rare. Um, but let's also be aware that, you know, this is hundreds of pounds and it is life or death. Um, but there are measures in place, especially if you're in an actual gym. Um, if you're in a home gym, you know, you should, if you don't have like a bench with face savers on it, um, you can construct or buy like some boxes or use milk crates, uh, things of that nature and have them set on the side and, you know, 
set them up and act as face savers. I think Blaine Sumner does this. Uh, and you know, he was using like ungodly weights, um, and having that, uh, as, as safety. Um, so, so I, I would go out of your way to have safety measures in place, especially if you're doing it by yourself alone. Um, and especially like, you know, in a home gym scenario or something like that, you know, if you're at a, a gym gym, you know, possibly there's other people there, even if you're not getting their help that would see you and be able to help or something. And you should, even if you don't trust the gym spotters, um, just say, hey, can you kind of keep an eye out over here? Uh, I'm about to do a heavy attempt or something like that. Um, I, that's something I frequently will do. I'll get two people to side spot, even if I know it's a rep that I, sh you know, short of like the freakiest of freak accidents happening. Uh, if there's people there, you know, I'll say, hey, can I get you guys on the side? And I'll, I'll tell them very much uh, before we before I do the lift, like, hey, I'm going to hand this off myself. I'm going to pause at the bottom. This should go pretty smooth. I probably don't need you guys. But just in case, I'd like you guys here, uh, you know, on the side. And they're, that little instruction is all they need. And, you know, I've never had anybody steal my rep, bro, or anything like that. So, um, y'all be safe out there. I'm just rambling at this point. Um, be safe. Peace.